Hi everyone, it's Raina. So I'm doing a series of videos on the different Venus signs. And this is Venus in Sagittarius. Again, for those who don't know where, where their Venus is, you can scroll down underneath this video and I have provided a link to the site Cafe Astrology and they have a list of all the dates when Venus transit through different signs and you can find your uh, particular date and take it from there. But um, I'm going to describe some of the qualities of Venus and Sagittarius and then talk about the sun signs and how they interact with this uh, Venus and Sagittarius. The sun can never be very far from the Venus sign. So if your sun is in Sagittarius, your Venus sign is going to be either in Sagittarius as well, or it's going to be as far as two signs behind you or two signs ahead. So for instance, I have a sun in Sagittarius, but my Venus is in Aquarius. And so I also want to talk about Venus as an influence in general. Venus is how you love. It's how you approach romance. People don't all think of love in the same way, and they don't treat love in the same way. Venus can also be the way that other people perceive you as a lover. And I'm not talking about the physical side of things. I'm talking about just your love nature. And it can also be your friendships. Venus can be artistic expression and art appreciation. So the type of art that you gravitate towards, as well as if you are an artist, the type of art that you create or the express expression that you use. For instance, I just did Scorpio, Venus and Scorpio, and that is a very dramatic expression. You, you wouldn't think of somebody like Monet as being a Venus and Scorpio type of an artist because um, it's very much the pastels and it's very, very delicate. And we're talking about very, um, maybe some dark, um, bold colors and some themes that are kind of uh, intense versus, you know, nature scenes with lilies and all that stuff. Okay, so how is Venus expressed in Sagittarius? Well, like the sun sign, we can look at some of the similar characteristics, except this is in the love nature. So we're talking about somebody who is really real, who's honest, you know, upfront in how they present themselves in love. They don't, they're not playing games like maybe Venus and Scorpio people have um, a tendency to do. They can enjoy spontaneity. So in their romance phase, they may love being adventurous and playful in love. And they have a tendency to shy away from commitment a lot of times, Venus in Sagittarius, no matter what the sun sign is. They may be like a little bit afraid because Sagittarius loves its freedom so much. And freedom to Sagittarius is all about being able to be who they are. All the fire signs are into creative self-expression. So we're talking about Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. They tend to be individualists, and they want the freedom to be who they are. And sometimes when people get involved in relationships, there can be this fear that they're going to lose their freedom of being an individual, of having that different expression from the other person. It's like you become like this big blob, you know, <laughs> with the other person. And um, so Sagittarius, because of its expansive nature, because it rules the ninth house, which in part deals with foreign travel, may be attracted to people from other countries or different walks of life. 
there is a t- maybe the person falls in love with somebody while they're on vacation or uh, on sabbatical, or whatever the what you know, like something to do with a university. If they're in academia, uh, maybe they're traveling as a professor and they fall in love with somebody abroad. They can fall in love with a fellow professor if they're in the academic world, or maybe a student falling in love with their professor. Anything intellectual, anything de- dealing with higher learning, or in the religious setting. Now, with Sagittarius, it's ruling the higher mind and higher thought. So it's talking about your philosophical framework and the different, maybe religious organizations uh, that you may belong to. And somebody from that. So maybe you take a a yoga class and you fall in love with somebody there because you're sharing this way of looking at the world. And it's a spiritual um, outlook. The type of art that Sagittarians may get involved with is very ornate. And that's probably the Jupiter influence and grandiose. Um, and so that can be one thing. I also would say anything religious in theme, spiritual in theme. And, um, basically with Sagittarius, with Venus and Sagittarius, you're not looking at a very heavy type of romantic nature. You're looking at somebody who's actually quite light in this regard. This can occasionally be a problem if the person has too light a touch and they, It's almost like a form of irresponsibility where they won't commit to anything and they uh, are kind of skimming the surface of life, going from one person to the other. This this can definitely be uh, true of a dual sign like Sagittarius. The mutable signs, which are Sag and Virgo and Gemini and Pisces, are called dual signs. And for Sagittarius... It's the half horse, half man with uh, Pisces, the two fish, Gemini, the twins. And for Virgo, it's the two virgins, I guess they're called. And this can indicate duality. Maybe the person has is of two minds or two personalities at times. For Gemini, they may have a tendency to want two of everything. So they may have two jobs. They may want to juggle two people at once. For Sagittarius, it can be more along the lines of being torn between two ways of being. And this can create a sense of conflict within the Venus and Sagittarius person and lead them to kind of go from, you know, maybe have two relationships going in an attempt to not have to deal with um, this kind of uh, situation to begin with. But if the Sagittarius person, the Venus and Sagittarius person, finds a fellow adventurer, then I think that's the best way to kind of remedy this issue. I was going to say as I started this reading that I think of Venus and Sagittarius like I think of the cover of Bob Dylan's album Freewheeling Bob Dylan, which I believe came out in 1963, if I'm not mistaken, or was it 64? I think it was 63. But it showed him, it's it's an iconic picture of him and the late Suze Rotolo, who was his girlfriend at the time. And they were very young in their early 20s, and they seemed totally into each other, but they had that kind of um, free-spirited vibe um, that really showed in the photograph. And I was tempted to actually use this for the, for the thumbnail, but I'm afraid to, even though it's listed as being available for free use, uh, just because it's hard for me to believe that they would allow it. But um, it does 
encapsulate perfectly not only the 60s, but that um, sentiment of um, treating love like an adventure, which I, I think it can be at its highest expression. Okay, so let's talk about the different sun signs. If your sun is in Libra, this is going to make you more sporty. I wrote more sporty, less frou-frou. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. You know, less, um, I was thinking like of, uh, sometimes I think of Libra, Libras, Libra women as, uh, you know, those, um, those little slippers that have the little poofy balls on them. Just kind of like that that kind of uh, girly girl thing. If a Libra woman has Venus and Sagittarius, she may even go camping once in a blue moon. Some, you know, just more laid back in that sense and not needing to have everything be perfect around her. Um, I'm talking about the aesthetics again and being very, maybe even a little bit of a tomboy when it comes to dealing with relationships. The intellectual situation will be off the hook because both Libra and Sagittarius are very much interested in things of the mind. And it'll be a breezy relationship. The person will be very fun to be around and they're not going to be all demanding. They won't be too possessive they themselves may not be as eager to commit as a Libra person normally is, but whatever. If they're with the right person, it's going to be all good. And they might spend money like water. So it might be one of those situations because Venus can also indicate your um, money smarts or your, or your relationship with money. If the sun is in Scorpio, it can lighten up the Scorpio person, make them less possessive, make them more spiritual. Although I do consider Scorpio to naturally be a psychic sign, but maybe more philosophical and less, and not just that innate intuitive gift that water signs tend to have. Maybe be more open honest about their feelings and less into power plays, maybe having more of an open wallet. So there are certain signs that I think of as being very retentive in that, in that um, area, and Scorpio is one of them. So maybe having more of an open wallet. In general, I would say that Venus in Sagittarius is very good for the sun in Scorpio because it can make them have a lighter touch when it comes to viewing their beloved. With the sun in Sagittarius, I wrote some things that were actually a little bit more on the negative side, and I didn't mean to, but we're talking about love here. And so love usually requires commitment. And this can make the sun and Sagittarius person even more leery of commitment because having that enhanced um, situation with Venus also in Sagittarius is like, wow, there can be this emphasis on a particular religion and being somewhat of a zealot, getting your partner involved in your religion or your spiritual belief. And um, if the person isn't into it, maybe being a little bit too preachy, especially if this is particularly if Venus is, is um, what do you call it, um, afflicted, if it has a lot of squares and or oppositions to it in your chart. It can, I think there can be an immaturity sometimes an irresponsibility on the person's end where they are a little bit flaky in their relationships. And remember that this can also be friendships. So maybe not returning people's calls and not um, following through on promises that, that were made. Sagittarius is a mutable sign. So, and it's a mutable fire sign. So it tends to 
go off on these crazes, the latest craze that they have, you know, um, because I have the sun in Sagittarius, I can say this, that I know that I'm, I f I'm into one thing and then I get into something else. And sometimes people uh, can be forgotten. They can be lost in the shuffle because the Sagittarius person may have a lot of interests and there may be an underlying unconscious thing of not wanting to commit. And these things can conveniently take over the person's mind and they have the perfect excuse about why they couldn't uh, return somebody's phone call after three months. Uh, the sun and Sagittarius person with Venus there as well may be even more inclined to be a globetrotter and wanting to go to different places, not just to, to travel like uh, going on a cruise and just indulging oneself, but to learn, to explore different cultures. And it could even more guarantee that the person meets somebody on one of these travels. It can lead also to being a spendthrift of just not even thinking about a budget, you know, not that not even being in the person's vocabulary because Jupiter rules Sagittarius and Jupiter is the planet of luck and expansion. So Sagittarians can be one of those people that others find annoying because they always, you know, have this Jupiter influence in the 11th hour, no matter what they've gotten themselves into um, lately, that uh, Jupiter like kind of uh, kicks in like a rich, uh, I don't know, grandparent that always bails out their uh, um, grandchild at the last minute. And um, people uh, can can look at this person and say, but they're irresponsible or they didn't save their money. And how come they get to have more of it? Well, because Sagittarius is very positive. And that's why I would say, too, for this type of person, you have to get with somebody who's very positive. If you're with somebody who is always complaining, seeing the glass half empty, this is going to suck the life out of you. So you're going to have to be very discerning about who you choose as a partner because that person is going to have access to you on a regular basis and you want to make sure it's a good influence. So if the sun is in Capricorn with Venus in Sagittarius, this can make the Capricorn a little bit more playful, especially in the romance sector. Capricorns tend to be all business, but perhaps when they are with their partner, they turn into a different person. It can make them more spontaneous in love. I always maintain that I believe Capricorn is actually very sensitive, even though they have a very cold, hard exterior sometimes, that a lot of that is a veneer of just um, being very capable and responsible. But they can fall in love like anybody else. And they may be very cautious, but with Venus and Sagittarius, they may be more inclined to be um, assertive and confident in love and adventurous even, dare I say. I, I wrote down more generous because Capricorn is one of those conservative signs and more passionate. Being an earth sign, it tends to be all business and this can make them more romantic. But I also wrote more youthful. They say that Capricorn is born old and starts getting younger as it gets older. Well, with Venus and Sagittarius, this can lend itself to that playful attitude I was talking about and make the people really feel like they are young at heart when they fall in love. And then on top of that, they have the outer workings of Saturn working on their behalf as they get older, and they may actually look more youthful. So it's a win-win. 
Okay, Sun in Aquarius. This can indicate somebody who is very, uh, who is more spiritual when they have this combination. Aquarius can be intuitive and it's like these flashes of insight, but they also are the sign of the scientist. And so I'm sure, I know Charles Darwin was an Aquarius who was a, um, an atheist. So I, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if there are more than the average amount of atheists for one sign in the sign of Aquarius. And this can make the person have more of a philosophical framework and believe in something um, bigger than themselves. It can make Aquarians more generous. I think of um, Aquarians, <laughs> okay, this is my blunt speech, is rather cheap. What do you think, Aquarius? You think you're um, cheap or not? So this could make you more generous, more passionate. You tend to be detached, free willing on steroids, loving your independence. Um, this means that I, what I like about this is that you may feel like, Hey, I don't have to fear falling in love because I can still be independent. It actually increases your independence. So I don't think you'll feel a sense of letting your guard down, that you're going to lose your independence. You, it may even strengthen that feeling of being independent. And it can also increase the love of, you know, the desire for a partner from a different walk of life, from a different culture than yours. Um, this is something that Aquarius shares with Sagittarius. But for Aquarius, it's not so much just some exotic foreign land that you may end up finding a partner, but somebody from a different walk of life, maybe in your own backyard, but maybe this person's of a different socioeconomic class. Maybe they are of a different race, but not necessarily a different nationality. And it's almost like Aquarius is the anthropologist who likes to be on the ground and witness these things up close and seeing how other people live uh, to the point that they're willing to get with one of those people. But actually Aquarius is a very uh, curious sign and also non-judgmental when it comes to people with different lifestyles. So it can be, you know, the, the more eccentric, the better for Aquarius. They're not going to turn their nose up at anybody who's a bohemian. They are right there with them. And this just enhances those qualities. Okay, you guys. Well, this has been a lot of fun and... I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like a private reading, if you scroll down below this video, I have links to a few of uh, the types of readings that I do, and it takes you directly to that page. But um, otherwise, have a great rest of 2017 and beyond. Take care. Bye.